my name is Leroy Blevins. Welcome to Mysteries and Histories. In this episode here, what we're going to do is we're going to analyze the bullet casings that they retrieved on the sixth floor of Texas School Book Depository in a JFK assassination. Why I started looking at these bullet casings is I have a friend named Guy Cooper. In 2010, in October of 2010, he contacted me and says, Hey, Lee, well, you know, I just got done watching this new video that shows the bullet casings. And he says some of them look, you know, like they had something on them. So I went ahead, he sent me the video, I viewed the video, and then we made contacts and got copies of each one of the images that he was showing in that video. And I got full copies of all the images they took of the bullet casings because the bullet casings, they'll... They won't let you touch them or feel them or nothing. Only thing they're going to do is let you sh uh, show you the images that they took of the bullet casings. Well, when I was viewing each one of the bullet casings and the images of them, I should say, I found that actually two of the bullet casings, in fact, does have a fingerprint on them. So the next step I did was to verify that they were fingerprints because here is a close-up. Of that bullet casing has the best fingerprint on it. We can see there's a fingerprint right here. This is the fingerprint here as well. I just made a negative of it, and we can see the fingerprints because see the dermal ridges right here in the fingerprint and right up in here. So what I did was I went ahead and got a copy of Oswald's fingerprints that they took on November 22nd, 1963, when they brought him into custody. So the next step I did was I took individually each one of Oswald's fingerprints and trying to line it up with the fingerprint, but they wouldn't match except for one. One, in fact, did match that bullet, you know, the fingerprint on that bullet casing. And that was Oswald's right thumbprint. This right here is Oswald's right thumbprint right here. This is the thumbprint that can be seen on the bullet casings. So what I did was, is after I found this, just to make sure that this thumbprint matches this thumbprint that's on this bullet casing, I contacted a friend who works in uh, the police department. He does forensics. And I sent him the images and a copy of Oswald's fingerprints. I did not pick any of the thumbprint. You know, I didn't tell him about the thumbprint or nothing. I said, could you tell me? I even took Lee Harvey Oswald's name off of there. And I said, could you tell me if any of these fingerprints matches, you know, the fingerprint that we could see on this bullet casing? So first he looked at it and he verified it was a fingerprint. Then he started to run through his computer of what fingerprint, you know, lining up each one of the fingerprints and found out that the right thumbprint of this subject matches the bullet casing thumbprint right here. Now, I then after he got contacted me back, we talked about it. He didn't want me to mention nothing because he was just doing it on the side for me because we're good friends. We've been friends for over 20 something years. So he verified it was 99.99% the right thumbprint of Oswald's thumbprint. The same as I came up with. I came up with 99.99%. But to be exaccurate and just to be positive to it, you would have to have the bullet casing in general itself and the original thumbprints of Oswald. And we can line it up that way to get 100%. But right at this point, it's 99.99%. After I found out, Oz, I found Oswald's thumbprint on the bullet casing, and how he got his thumbprint on the bullet casing is this. Let's take, say, this pen. Okay, first off, we're going to open up the pen because we want this to be at the top of the bullet, and this part here is the bullet casing, and this is the bullet, right? We'll say this is the part that is the bullet, and then we got the bullet casing. To get Oswald, Oswald's print was on there when he was loading the clip for the rifle. He placed his thumb here, and that's how you load him into the clip. 
as you load them in like this. That's how Oswald got his thumbprint on there. Now, after what got me is this. I want a little story here just real quick. When I found this out, and I point this out to other people, even to the gentleman that made that video about the bullet casings, he says, yeah, you're right. That is a, you know, a thumb, that is a fingerprint that's on that bullet casing. You know, he even himself admitted that, you know, he was wrong, but, you know, there is a fingerprint on that bullet casing. When I brought this out, I'll start getting backlash from it because, you know, everybody wants Oswald to be the patsy, you know, or the hero, but he was, he was one of the assassins. Oswald, they claimed, now they claim Oswald's print was put on there, so they put Oswald's print on this bullet casing when he was in the morgue. Well, one, that's not true. Because pure some fact of it is no one knew these prints was on the bullet casings. They wasn't discovered until we got done, me and my friend Guy Cooper. He told me about it. I analyzed the film, I mean, the images and stuff, and yes, we found Oswald's thumbprint on there, and that was in October of 2010. So, for all this time from 1963 to 2010, no one even knew about these fingerprints on these bullet casings until I came out with it. So, for them to claim that they placed Oswald's thumbprint on them when he was in the morgue is bogus. Because if they'd done that, they would have brought this evidence out in 1963. They would say, here's Oswald's thumbprint on this bullet casing. Well, they didn't even know it. The FBI didn't know it. Or the police department didn't know it or anything else. I made We made that discovery. I'm going to give uh, Guy Cooper some credit as well on that. We made this, you know, this discovery in 2010. So they did not take this bullet casing to the morgue and put Oswald's thumbprint on it. Now, I'm going to pull this up and we're going to talk about this for a minute. After I found, you know, got the finger, seen the fingerprints on the bullet casings, I placed them back in the location where they was found. And also, as you see in this image here, locations where they found Oswald's palm print, fingerprint, other palm print, and the bullet casings where his thumbprint was found on them just to get more of a realistic of what was going on at that time okay because we get information from this like i said when you look at an image of stuff and we know exactly where they found this at or found that at we get more information from it now when oswald sat on the box how he got his palm print on there is when he was just stuff he put his hand down on the side of them, adjust himself. When you put your hand flat down on the box, that's what you're going to do. You're going to just have your palm print on your neck and fingerprint. Just like the box that was sitting in front of them. By finding a fingerprint, on, one fingerprint on this side of the box, and then the palm print on this side of the box, we know that Oswald put his hand here and took his finger and pushed that box over just a little bit so he can have a proper way of shooting. So see, now we know, now we can tell by this information, we could tell what Oswald was doing in that location at that time before he took his shots. Now we're going to go back to these false claims again, to where they also claimed that they took these boxes and the rifle and all this other stuff in the morgue and placed Oswald's prints on these. Except for one thing. Okay, Oswald was shot and killed on a Sunday, which was October 24th. The prints on the boxes, the prints on the rifle, whether they believe it or not, or say, you know, more false claims about it, but the rifle, the palm print on the rifle, palm print on the box, the fingerprints on the boxes and stuff was actually found on November 22nd, two days before Oswald got shot. They already found his prints. But people says, oh no. <clears throat> Excuse me. They showed the evidence on the 25th. So this proves that they, you know, place Oswald's prints on there while he was in the morgue. No, that's not right either. 
before Oswald was shot, they take all the evidence that they find and they gather and they put evidence boxes and evidence envelopes and stuff and they hold it until trial. No one's not allowed to talk about this evidence. No one's not allowed to see this evidence. No one's not allowed to show this evidence because they need to bring this to court and they have to show it in court. Well, with Oswald dying on the 24th, that's the reason why they brought some of this evidence out because there wasn't no sense in keeping it because there is, they know that there was never going to be a trial. So that's when they started showing this evidence. But in the reports in documents and stuff, Oswald's prints were found on the boxes and the rifle and everything else. Actually, on November 22nd, 1963, Oswald didn't get killed until uh, November, excuse me, November 22nd, 1963, when they found this evidence. And it was not until November 24th was when Oswald got killed. So there's another false claim that people once put out there because they're trying to prove Oswald's innocence. But you have to look at it this. Oswald was, in fact, one of the assassins. This is a fact. Not only by the evidence that I've gathered, but other people's gathered as well. We have to keep this in mind when we're doing research. We have to keep an open mind. But we cannot let, you know, other people come us if they're going to claim about this, claim about that. You know, we got, to, as researchers, we have to look at the evidence ourselves and come up with our own judgment. Oswald was guilty, and they knew it, as being one of the assassins. They know there was actually more assassins there that day. It's just, they want to just put it off, you know, point it as one person. They did not place Oswald's fingerprints or anything else while he was in the morgue. Now, this brings up the fact of where um, Oswald, you know, they uh, came there and took fingerprints of Oswald and palm print and everything else because there was ink on his hands. This is true. When he was in the morgue, they had to take his fingerprints and his palm print and place it in the file that he was dead. Because they do this even to the day. They'll take somebody's palm print, fingerprints, stuff to verify that is the person that's lying on the table. They had to take fingerprints. They take even they even take prints of people's feet. Uh, they take pictures of people's teeth and stuff like that as well. In some cases, just like in Oswald's case. They would have to fingerprint him two or three times. And also, if they did his feet, I don't know if they did or not. But I know they did fingerprint his palm and his hands and his fingers. Because you have the CIA files. You have the FBI files. You have the government files of different majority of them. You have the police files and stuff. And they all have to have evidence, which is first-hand evidence, which is the original prints. They can't just take a copy of the uh, fingerprints and say, here you go, here you go, here you go. They all have to have original documents in their files. So, yes, they did fingerprint Oswald when he was in the morgue. But the prints that they found on the boxes, on the rifle, and other locations, then was actually found on the 22nd, Oswald was still alive. So, in this video here, I just want to show you the bullet casing that actually has Oswald's thumbprint on it. And it is Oswald's thumbprint, 99.99%. It's his right thumbprint. And please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to tell your friends about us. I have more videos coming up. I'm probably going to take a break tomorrow because I've still been feeling under the weather and stuff. Right now, I'm running a fever. And I just got done making two other videos before this one. So I'll probably take a day off or two, but then again, I don't know. I might make some more tomorrow, but I just wanted to make sure I get this video out there, show people that Oswald in fact was one of the assassins and there's more evidence to back this up as well, which I'm going to bring out, but Oswald's bull, uh, thumbprint can be seen on the bullet casings that they retrieved from the sixth floor Texas school book depository. Thank you and good night.